so you're back cool let's go ahead and get started then um, so in the last video I showed you a little bit what the terminal is let's get a little feel for it in this video one thing that we do work with is going to be text lots and lots of text if you don't like reading most likely the terminal isn't the best way to go however um, if you can kinda handle the reading here and there um, then you'll be pretty set one thing to know um, is everything is handled in text, in strings, in words, and letters. So when you want to give the computer a command, it's going to be something you're telling it to do. It's not human spoken language, so the way I'm speaking to you now, it's not going to be, hey computer, can you do this for me? It's going to be some encrypted method of finding the command that you want to use and putting attributes to it and so on. And we'll get to attributes and other pieces in the first, and later on. Uh, let's go ahead and start with the basic idea or the basic program that we would have in any other language, the hello world idea. So in the instance of printing hello world, we're going to go ahead and simply put echo hello world. And as you can see, the new line right here is going to be where hello world is set. Um, in this case, echo is the command to show something to the screen. This is very useful for scripting when you want to tell the user something otherwise it's kinda useless however in this case you see also the quotations which is anything in these quotations going to be printed on the screen you notice the quotations aren't actually included I'm gonna go ahead and do the same idea but I'm gonna put it to a text file um, this is very useful when you're trying to do some sort of da data mining or finding out information and saving it so you don't have to worry about going to the same command or copying and pasting it from the screen so in this situation I'm going to put hello or echo hello world and at the very end I'm going to pipe it towards a text file I'm going to use the greater than symbol to symbolize move this into this text file and I'll go ahead and put it into the hello world.txt and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my desktop directory and once I hit enter you'll see there it is hello world right on my desktop if I open it up, it's a very simple text um, of hello world. Now there are two ways to do it. The single greater than is going to create a file or replace the contents of an already existing file. Now if you want to append something to the end of it, echo hi there, we're going to go ahead and do the same exact idea. And now, I'm going to go ahead and open it up again, and you will see hi there, which I misspelled there. But this is going to be to start the file off or replace whatever is in there, and this is going to be appended to the very end of the text file. And what if I just go ahead and do another one, like this, with the regular expression to create a new one. open it up again and we see it replaced everything inside this text file with whatever I wanted to do and again there's your example um, this is going to be just to make it to start it off or to replace the text file with another string or some sort of string this is going to be append whatever you want or whatever is on this side of the um, greater than symbol to the end of this file and this is just going to be the location of the file and then again we did it one more time and replaced it with the single greater than now right now this is just an example and nothing real of use with it but I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how you can use it I like to use a program called LSW LSHW but I have to run it as root and I'll explain root in the future but let's see what happens when I run this program Go ahead and make the window a lot bigger. So right now it looks like it's scanning my hardware, kind of figuring what's going on, and we get lots and lots of text. This is your general program to figure out what hardware you have on your computer, and it's very good for troubleshooting, finding out um, what's wrong or what drivers you need to be using, um, and what literally the manufacturer is of said hardware. And from here, you can literally 
look up this number or this product and find the drivers for it and so on and so forth. But this is a lot of text. I have to scroll a lot and if I want to share this with somebody or keep it for future reference, it's not always the best way to just keep pressing that program. So I'm going to do is pipe it. I'm going to pipe it straight to the desktop. I'm going to do the LH, lshw result.txt file. And it's going to do its little method again. Depending on how much hardware, it's going to take a different amount of time to get that displayed. And that's done. And there it is right here. Now from the text file, we can do a lot of things. We can literally do a control find and search for or network. We can easily go back and forth and find the specific information we want. We can do it in the terminal as well, but for now we'll go ahead and do it in this method. And it's a lot easier to manage. We can save the file, we can edit it, and we can do whatever we want with it. And this is all the information that popped up on the terminal here. It's very, very useful to have, um, especially to know that you can actually put text in files. Very good to have, uh, work with, and uh, just keep information so you never have to constantly go in on and on again. Now I'll introduce you to one more thing and that is the, the terminal text editor and there's a few of them there is one called VI I don't like it too much um, I'll give you an example of what it looks like and it gives you a little help here it gives you um, it's all keyboard shortcut based so there's no buttons there's nothing to work with I don't like it too much because it doesn't show all the information you can work with I'm gonna go ahead and press Q to exit, it's not working out very well. One thing, if you're stuck in a program, you don't have to get out of it. Simply press the Control Z button, and that'll forcefully stop that process. One of my favorite editors, however, is going to be Pico. Now, this is a lot better. As you can see, we have a little bit on the bottom here how to exit, write out, write in, yada yada. And I can simply just start typing here. Uh, what was it? The what that fox thing whatever the lazy dog blah 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 and I can go ahead and do control X now this little up arrow is symbolized by control if we press control X we're exiting and it says you want to save the modifier or you want to save this file and you want to press yes and you can write the name and location of where you want it and boom there it is so that's another way to edit text. I'm not too fancy of it. Um, it takes a while to get used to. And text editors are simp very simple, so you can easily just pipe all the information to your local GUI text editor, and basically edit it or whatever you want to do in there. Um, that's a little bit about it. So that's kind of handling the text that you'll be working with. We're going to go ahead in the next video and uh, show you a little bit more about the terminal. More specifically, we're going to be doing directories, um, how they work, how you navigate them. I'll give you a little metaphor on kind of understanding the process. Ciao.